Hi everybody, Bobby from the Rabbitry Center and today we're gonna go over five of the best meat rabbits that you possibly can choose for your production. Here we go. If you're new to our channel, we make videos to help you with your rabbitry. So if that interests you, be sure to click the bell and subscribe so you can get our videos when they come out. The number one all time best of best rabbits is the New Zealand White. Now, originally they were New Zealand Reds. In 1913, they arrived four years later, the New Zealand Reds, there was one litter that had four albino rabbits in it. Then through a program, they made more, and today, there is no rabbit that is produced on a, on a larger scale than the New Zealand Whites. Most meat production companies prefer the white because those furs, the hides, can be dyed any color. Why is the New Zealand so popular for, well for one because you can get the New Zealand white but but reds are producing just as much as whites blues blacks they come in blue black white red and broken with all those different colors you, you got all these different options New Zealand rabbits make terrific pets you know they come when they're called they'll actually become litter trained if you put litter boxes in every corner of the house they'll pick one and being able to sell them easily for pets to supplement income you can count on them to produce a lot of rabbits they're gonna be able to kindle often they're gonna have fast grow rates. They're good moms. They dress out really well. Uh, their bodies are just proportioned muscular perfectly. They are everything that you want in a rabbit and they're abundant. They, they're, they're usually pretty easy to find. Um, sometimes you do have to drive, you know, depending on where you're at. You know, the number two rabbit is also a white rabbit. So Number two, California rabbits, also a white rabbit. It's got the red ruby eye. It's got the pointed gene where all the color goes to the, it's got black ears, black feet, and black nose. And also makes terrific pets. You can sell them as pets so you can make that money back for your feed. You want your rabbits to pay for themselves. And Californians can do that. They're gonna produce just as well. They're gonna dress out just as well as the New Zealand. And they're also gonna have, you're, you're gonna have the short hair hide that you can sell out to, to be dyed any color. Now, they came on in the 1920s. They were, they were bred, from, developed from a chinchilla rabbit and a Himalayan rabbit. Himalayan looks a lot like the Californian, but they were put together to make that muscular body and size. But Californians are a terrific choice. Now here in mid-Michigan, we don't sell as many as we do the New Zealand. So we're, more of those rabbits go to our freezer. They, we still sell our share of them, but they're just not as popular. They produce just as well, their moms are just as good, and you know, every rabbit's a little different. You know, you're always gonna have some rabbits that are, are may, may act a little weird, but um, in general, they're, they're great producers. Number three, number three is the Palomino. Now, the, why we chose number three for the Palomino is because they dress out perhaps even better than the New Zealand and the California rabbit. So the Palomino was developed by Mark Youngs back in 1952 from his American beige breed. And he used so many meat rabbits and outcrossed so much that he lost track. And the, he brought it to the American Rabbit Breeders Association. They, were, they were, didn't recognize it. They said it still needed a little bit more work. The eyes were getting circles around it. Eventually, uh, they were called Washingtonians because they were developed in Washington State, but they were finally recognized by the ARBA. The story goes that he put a coffee can out for suggestions and Palomino was the, the winner. Somebody put in their golden Palomino. And that, that's what they come in, golden and lynx. And he was trying to get more of a, a brownish color. And uh, that's what it kind of looks like, like a fawny brown or almost like a natural chestnut ag agouti. I almost said Ugati. Number four, the satin rabbit. Now the satin rabbit's a little different because it's in a different fur category. In rabbits you got different fur categories, regular, uh, rex, satin, angora, and satin is like bred from Havana rabbits. It's like a silky, like running your hand over silk sheets. Satin rabbits were developed by a man named Walter Huey in 1932, and he was working with Havana rabbits, and he brought the rabbit into the ARBA, and they couldn't accept the fact that this was just a, a Havana mutation. And so eventually, they, it was known as Havana satins, and now today, satin rabbits, and they come in lots and lots of different colors and they're beautiful rabbits. The number five rabbit, Champagne D'Argent. Don't go anywhere, we're gonna talk about a couple more. Champagne D'Argent is one of the oldest rabbits we're gonna talk about today. Documents all the way back to the 1600s. They were raised by monastery monks. 
they are the French silver and Champagne d'Argent or Darjan. There's actually seven kinds worldwide, but the ARBA only recognizes two, cream and champagne. And the Champagne d'Argent rabbits, they're born black. And you know, right around three weeks, they'll start to turn silver from the belly all the way up to the back. Eventually by six months, they're silver. The older they get, the more silver they get. They've got a really cool fur where it's black on the inside, silver on the, out, on the outer uh, hair and it just gives it this awesome look. Now these rabbits have been proven for centuries and that's why they made the list. They're terrific producers, they're, they dress out really well, they have good litters and they're easy to handle. They have really cool fur and they're easy sellers. All these rabbits we're gonna talk about today will live right around from seven to 10 years. They're gonna average right around 10 pounds. The females are gonna be a little bit bigger. They all are similar because they're all terrific meat rabbits. These are like the best of the best. Sorry about the shade shot. I mean, I had to post up in the shade because it's just been 90 every day. And I know you folks in Texas are laughing at me because you're like 90, Pff, I wish. But I mean, that's hot for Michigan. A rabbit that almost made the list, that should have made the list. I mean, it's a terrific, another absolute wonderful meat rabbit. It's in the American Chinchilla. In 1913, a French engineer, MJ Dabowski, he made the American Chinchilla through from the larger breed Chinchilla, and he wanted a more muscular body. And you know, their coat, they took the rabbit community by storm. It, it's such an amazing, good looking, uh, feeling coat that, and they're, they're terrific producers and they're, they, they dress out really well. So, and also a, a good rabbit with really cool fur is Rex rabbit. Um, you know, they have a velvety fur, a short velvety fur. They're a little bit smaller, but they also dress out really well with a good bone to meat ratio. Silver fox rabbits, also kind of a cool look, almost uh, similar to the Champagne d'Argent. Um, also, terrific producers, easy to, to work with. Um, you know what, they're worth mentioning, one small breed rabbit, the Florida White. It's like a giant chunk of meat. The bone, they probably dress out better than any rabbit that we mentioned, but they're just a smaller five pound rabbit. But they do well in the heat, uh, they don't eat very much. Sorry, a Harley's going by. Yeah, they don't eat very much and at 12 weeks, they're fast growers and you can harvest them at 12 weeks. You know, there's there's also other rabbits like cinnamons and you know, I'm not mentioning all the great rabbits. The ARBA recognizes right around 50 rabbits and you know, they're not all made for meat. You know, they're, they're just all sorts of different kinds of rabbits. You got lops, you got giants and you know, when it comes down to meat rabbits and giants, it's a big misconception that people think they're gonna get more meat, but what happens with the giant rabbits, you may have heard this already, that they, they eat more, they need more room, um, they take longer to grow out and once it comes time to harvest, you're gonna have this bone to meat ratio where you're gonna have this big pile of bones and the pile of meat isn't gonna be, come close to medium breeds. So when it comes to producing meat for your family, it's a better choice to go with a medium style breed rabbit because of that meat to bone ratio. And also you have to make the decision why you're raising rabbits and what rabbit exactly is going to be the right rabbit for you. You know, if I didn't mention the rabbit that you raise, I apologize for that. Please don't hesitate to share the rabbit that you're raising. Let us know this rabbit also makes a great rabbit. Please do that. These, these rabbits are the, the best of the best, the most famous. And I know with all the breeds out there, there are also good producers and please share your information. I really appreciate anybody that takes the time to do that. Thank you for that. You know, when you're raising your rabbits for meat, you certainly want them to be as comfortable as possible because when you, when you care about that sort of thing, they're gonna produce well for you and they're gonna do it for years. I mean, these rabbits that breed regularly on your property, they're gonna be with you for years. We've had rabbits so long that they died of natural causes. They have names and we, we, we basically go through cast members of TV shows that we like and that's how we name our rabbits. Now the litters, of course, they're being sold and they're being they're sent off to the processor and, and everything well they don't send off we process here but you know that's a different story but it's a big misconception that people that raise animals and process them they don't care about making sure that they're comfortable and they hold their their habitat to the highest degree so just know that you're not alone uh, there's lots of people harvesting meat out there and and when you make that decision to grow your own meat I tell you when you when you have food out on the, the table with your family and you know that the vegetables and the meat that that are on that plate are chemical free and it's high quality food there's no better feeling so thank you very much for watching please leave your questions and comments below and we'll see you on the next video